Today we're going to discuss voltage drop and power loss over transmission for low voltage DC circuits. So here we have a wire, and inside this wire there is a conductive material, copper. And the conductor inside allows current to flow through it at a mostly unhindered rate. How much current this can carry is determined by quite a few factors, and how much current we can effectively and efficiently carry is also determined by quite a few factors. And if we want to calculate the thickness of this conductor so it can carry our loads for our application, we need to keep a few specific factors in mind. So first factor is the conductor material. Usually this is always copper, but sometimes it is aluminum. Next factor is the distance that you need to carry this current. Next factor is the temperature of the conductor. And the higher the temperature, the higher the resistance, and the more voltage drop or power loss over distance that will occur. Next factor is the allowable efficiency loss for your application. If you have a critical continuous load, you want it to be 2% or less. And a 2% loss obviously means that you're getting 98% of your energy transmitted across the distance. For most applications, 2% is ideal. If you have a non-critical load, you can actually use 5%, but in my opinion, it's better to stick with 2%. So let's go straight to a real world example so you guys can quickly understand how to size a conductor. Let's say that I want to carry seven amps from a solar panel array across 50 feet. And the max temperature that it will see is 60 degrees Celsius because solar array cables can get warm in the sun. And with this information, I can put it into an ampacity chart for a specified code. And this is for AC conductors, wires that are bundled for ABYC, and then we have standard ABYC for low voltage DC. And if this confuses you, you don't have to worry, there's an easier way. Because on the internet, there are solar cable gauge calculators. But keep in mind that these calculators are only for a specified conductor material. It says on the top, copper wire only. This should never be used for aluminum wire or any other type of conductor only copper. So first it's asking for the solar array optimum operating voltage. And even though I know this is at 100 to 110 volts, I'm gonna put 120 volts to be on the safe side. Next it asks for the solar array optimum operating current. And I know that that is seven amps. The wire length is 50 feet, but this distance can cause some confusion when using these online calculators, and that's why I'm using this one first. So with this calculator, it specifies wire length from solar array to charge controller in feet. So what that means is that this calculator is calculating the loss for the whole DC circuit, which for a 50 feet run from a solar charge controller to an array is actually 100 feet of conductor material because you have a wire that goes out and a wire that comes back. An acceptable percentage loss, two to 5% recommended. Typically for critical loads, you keep it at 2% no matter what. Then you press the button, and the calculator states that I can use 14 AWG or American wire gauge. And this cable can carry that current effectively with minimal loss. Now let's go on another site and size cables for an inverter. And I like the one on wire barn. I use this one all the time. So first you put in the voltage, 13.8 volts. And the amperage, let's go for something big. Let's say we wanna pull 300 amps. And now it's asking for the wire length. I would expect the battery bank to be very close to the inverter, so let's put four feet. But this wire length is only for a one-way run. So if you have something that's four feet away and you need two wires, you actually have to put eight feet in here. For my calculation, I'm assuming that you're connecting to a bus bar on a large battery bank. So the wire run from the bus bar to the inverter should be two feet or less. So I put four feet in. And it's asking for percent drop or the efficiency of this conductor that we want with our specified application. And I always use 2% or less. But you can choose 1%, 2%, 5%, or 10%. And this will show the max length and end voltage or the voltage drop across this size of conductor with a specified American wire gauge size over here. And it states that we can safely power this 300 amp load with minimal loss with a two gauge wire. And this might be shocking for some people. They're thinking, wait, 300 amps? And this is because the wire length is a large determinant factor of how efficiently a conductor can transmit current over a distance. The longer it is, the more cumulative loss, which will increase the efficiency loss over that length. Now let's say I wanna carry 300 amps across 10 feet, and we will need two-aught gauge wire, which is very thick. 
And this is two watt gauge wire. So look at how thick this is. And this is a two gauge wire. So look, we can safely carry 300 amps through both of these conductors, but this one can only handle four feet and this one can only handle 10 feet. And that's with a 2% loss. So as the wire distance or conductor size increases, the thickness of the wire increases drastically, at least if you wanna run it efficiently. But technically, both of these conductors can handle a lot of current, but it's just how efficiently it will do so. So it is crucial to always use a calculator or an ampacity chart to figure out how much current you can safely and efficiently transmit over a distance. And I wanna mention an excerpt from a really good book that I have about this issue. It states that you will recall that all cables have a certain internal resistance, and it is the passage of a current through this resistance that generates heat. The longer a cable, the more its cumulative resistance, and therefore the more the total heat generated with the passage of a given current. As a result, it would seem that the longer the cable, the less its safe current carrying capability. But this is in fact not the case because the longer the cable, the greater the surface area from which to dissipate this heat, and consequently the greater the rate of total heat dissipation. The net result is that when making ampacity calculations, the length of a cable is irrelevant. It doesn't matter whether the cable is two feet long or 2,000 feet long, its current carrying capability will still be the same. But the amount of heat generated will be astronomically higher across a 2,000 foot distance. Because all of this stuff is very relative, that's why we always need to calculate for a conductor material, the amperage that we wish to carry, and at a specified temperature. If you have a conductor in an engine bay and it's next to an exhaust pipe, the internal resistance of that conductor will increase because the temperature is higher. But most people do not need to worry about that for any part of a solar system except for on the roof. But with a roof PV cable, we already oversize them. If you're using 10 AWG, you're good to go. But if you're doing marine or automotive application, you might need to use these charts and find out what the efficiency is at your temperature. And another way you can measure this is the voltage drop across a power resistor. You can think of everything as a resistor because there is a certain resistance value. And when current flows through this, if we measure the voltage from here to here, we can see what voltage drop is occurring. And we can use that to calculate the loss. In my opinion, it's much easier to simply stick to these charts and the voltage drop calculators just to find out what conductor size you need for your specified application. Something else we can talk about is what the insulation is rated for. Most insulation is rated for 600 volts and various types of insulations can handle different types of environments. For example, this is PV array cable for commercial applications. This is very high quality stuff and this can handle the temperatures on a roof for over 30 years. And it's waterproof and it can handle UV rays, it's UV resistant. And this stuff is thick and there's multiple layers. Now this is marine rated cable. So this can handle water and oil and UV. This can handle almost everything, but it costs a lot more. Same as the PV cable. These insulative sheaths are made with high quality materials and made to last a long time. Here is an automotive conductor. This can handle vibration really well, oil and water, but it's designed for low voltage DC. And this is designed for high voltage DC. And we could make a whole other video about the various types of insulation and their names, but I wanna give you guys a general sense of how these things differ. When you go into a store, this stuff is very different than this stuff. Everything has a specified application. If you're running wire through an automobile, you need to use automotive wire. If you're connecting a large inverter to a battery bank, use welding cable. This is pure copper and has high quality insulation. And it has a high strand count so you can actually bend it without damaging it. If you're trying to wire a house, you're gonna to have to use solid core wire. So for the beginners, let's recap one more time. If you wanna use an ampacity chart or a calculator online, you need to know the conductor material, how much current you wish to carry, how far you wish to carry that current, and the allowable tolerance for efficiency, and typically stick to 2%, and the temperature of the conductor. If you're in a very hot environment, such as next to an exhaust of a vehicle, you will have to compensate for that loss. And that's pretty much it. Stick to the calculators, use the charts, and you'll be good to go. Once you do this a lot, you'll have an intuitive feel of 
how much current I can carry through a conductor. Until then, use the calculators every single time. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you soon. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments below and yeah, have a good day. Bye.